So this little box here cost me about $20,000. Um, it's sort of fairly portable, yeah, so move it around, it weighs about 20 kilos. In principle, you can take it on a plane. Um, it'll actually all just wheel around. So what could possibly cost that much money in a suitcase? What does he look like on the inside? So we open this guy up and instantly it looks like something that a terrorist might have in a Hollywood movie. Um, in reality, it's a lot simpler than it looks. You've got two pumps here. This is a vacuum gauge. This is a mass spectrometer. This rather mm, uh, innocuous looking tube here, and this is the analyzer. So this thing, they've actually flown these sorts of things on NASA space probes. Um, so these two just give you a vacuum in this tube. That measures the vacuum in this tube. That's all really important. Then you bring stuff in here, and this will effectively weigh molecules for you, or separate them for you if you were keen. Um, so why on earth might you want to do that? So imagine here what you've got is space, a perfect vacuum. So obviously things in vacuum will just move around in straight lines. And I'm going to have two atoms in there. Uh, two atoms of uranium, as it turns out. One is uranium-235, one is uranium-238. Now, um, they're chemically identical, very difficult to separate 235 and 238. But one of the reasons you might want to do it, of course, is if, say, for instance, you wanted to make a nuclear bomb, as, say, America wanted to do in the Manhattan Project. So you need to separate these two. So one way you can do it is you zap them with uh, electrons, which knocks electrons off these things, and makes them positively charged. Now that they're positively charged, you can accelerate them in an electric field like this. And then you put a magnetic field across here, and of course the heavier one has much more momentum to it. It's not quite as simple, but the heavier one basically has a straight trajectory, while the lighter one actually has a more curved trajectory. So what this effectively does is it weighs nuclei, or, or in this case, separates them. And this is um, very close to how America made its uranium for its first nuclear bomb, the, the uranium-235. Um, so they had huge devices for doing this, and they required astronomical amounts of energy. And eventually they managed to get all the uranium that they needed, the 235, to make a nuclear weapon. However, so that's, that's basically what this machine does down here. So in principle, it will actually separate your uranium-235 and 238, but it would do so at such a slow rate that it wouldn't be practical. However, it will do other things which are really quite useful. This is one of the things that I've become really interested in, is measuring the human metabolism in real time. What's actually going on here? And this device will actually allow me to do that. So the air that you're breathing is made up of some principal components. So there's N2 nitrogen, that's about 80% of the air that you're breathing is nitrogen, which doesn't do anything for you. About 20% is oxygen. If you don't get that, you die in a, in a few minutes. There's a little bit of water in there, which I'll put on one side for the moment. And then there's carbon dioxide, which is it's about 300 parts per million 400 parts per million, that sort of thing of what you breathe in, and it's about 5% of what you breathe out. So when you breathe air in, it's about 80%, 20%, 0% approximately. And when you breathe it out, it's 80%, 15%, and 5%. And the reason this is interesting is all of the carbon here actually came from your body. And it turns out that uh, you <laughs> excrete most of the weight that you lose through your mouth. So here's yeah, this thing that we all essentially get most of our weight in through our mouth and we excrete, um, for which there are less polite terms, most of the weight that we get rid of through our mouths. Now, that machine there will very easily separate out these. So basically we feed in the oxygen that we, uh, sorry, we feed in the air that we breathe out and of course, the heavier molecules 
go more straight. The slightly less heavy ones come down here, and the lighter ones come down here. So I mean that that that's basically how these things would, would separate out. So you can measure your the components of what you're breathing out in real time, very dynamically. But this isn't much use. I mean, this, this you could do with much simpler and cheaper methods. What I want to do is I want to label one of these with an isotope. Um, just like the uranium-235 and 238, they have the same chemical properties, but they weigh different amounts. You can get a different isotope of carbon here. So for instance, carbon-13. So this weighs slightly more than this. So this weighs 44, this weighs 45. So if I were to eat some, and the thing is there's almost no carbon-13 in your body. So if I eat some carbon-13, I know where it came from because it's what I ate. And the reason that I'm so keen to do this is simple. Being overweight is one of the biggest killers on the planet. And losing weight is obviously something that people find very difficult, else there wouldn't be so many overweight people. It also means that selling quick fix diets is one of the biggest false hope markets on the planet. And it's amazing what you start to notice when you unplug. You look around and you're just stunned at the utterly bogus Get Slim Quick magazines that dominate things like checkout aisles. Now, a year or so ago, I busted some breatharians who claimed that they, they lived on just breathing air and nothing else. In those moments, if I choose to drink something or eat something, it's not ever because I feel hungry. I don't remember what that sensation feels like. So loads of people sent me this on Twitter. Folks that claim that they don't even remember what hunger is like anymore. They just don't feel the need to eat, even during their pregnancy. Almost, I think maybe four times in my pregnancy with him, I ate something. And this was like in, in social settings. Hell, you even get people who claim that they've been blessed by the gods, such that they didn't have to eat for decades. Pralad Yani, an Indian holy man born in 1929, claims to have neither eaten nor drank since childhood. And at the time of making that video, I resolved to lose some weight myself, the scientific way, the thermodynamic way. Because you really can just sit down with a pen and paper and work out realistically how long it will take you to lose the weight. Well, has this been successful in the long game? Well, pretty much. This is my weight over the last 18 or so months. I'm getting on for about 10 kilograms lighter than I was, which many would see as a sort of fairly modest weight loss. But even at that, I feel so much better for this in almost every aspect. Now, you might think that I'm just straight up crazy holding five liters of oil like this. It's about five kilos, but this is how much weight I've actually managed to lose in the last 50 or so days. So it's like, eh, give or take, it's five, five liters, five kilos of oil. As you might expect, 10 kilograms is actually quite a heavy backpack, and I used to carry that around on my body 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I also periodically get people sending me stuff saying that this inspired them to lose weight, which is fantastic. I mean, again, not by some quick fix method, thermodynamically. And this is the sort of thing that in reality extends the quality and quantity of people's lives. So yeah, I figure that's a, a good thing to try and inspire people to do. Anyway, when I was doing the first round of this, it was fairly simple stuff. Just measuring my weight loss over the period of an hour or, or a day or so. And measuring the amount of oxygen and carbon dioxide in your breath. Next time, it's going to be hardcore. I'm going to be able to tell you exactly how long it takes to turn a cocktail or a chocolate bar into carbon dioxide. How long it takes you to burn those exact calories, which is exactly the sort of thing you would need to know to dispel a lot of these empty voodoo promised diets out there. So if I got some carbon-13 sugar and ate it, I would be able to monitor the spike of the carbon-13 dioxide that I breathe out, and I would know exactly where it came from. So I could track down the metabolism 
of sugars or proteins or lipids or alcohol. You could drink the alcohol and work out exactly how much of it you're turning into carbon dioxide and how much you're just breathing out naturally. So that's, that's one of the reasons why I got this machine is because I want to do some experiments like this where um, I eat the carbon-13 sugar when I'm not doing anything. So does it just get stored immediately or do I metabolize it almost immediately? Where does the carbon dioxide come out? And if I'm doing hard exercise, does it come out much more quickly? Do I metabolize it almost instantly? Or does my body metabolize sugars from elsewhere in my body and have a different mechanism for storing the food that I've just eaten? And there are other things I've got lined up for these bad boy too. Like, I don't know, maybe I'll see what the isotopic composition of my uranium is like. So I hope you're looking forward to me turning myself into a genuine biological test tube and sharing the most intimate details of my metabolism with you because, eh, spoiler alert, they're probably going to be fairly similar for all of us biological reactors, which is the sort of thing that's useful if you want to understand weight loss or realistically approach it or to debunk bullshit, empty promises, weight loss programs. Today is my first day on the cleanse, the Hollywood 48 hour miracle diet. And if you approve of projects like this, then please consider signing up and supporting this channel through Patreon, because it really helps out with projects like this.